And Lord God, we thank you for delivering us financially so many times, time and time again, and times and time times again, Lord God, that you have been faithful to us, Lord God, and we just pray to be faithful back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, my sermon today has got a little bit of current news in it, just so you know, give you a heads up warning a little bit. But I also need to make a correction on last week. Wow. Goodness is not the same as repentance. Repentance is turning to God. Amen? Not our goodness. Our goodness gets us nowhere. It's when... Our goodness is as filthy rags, is what the Bible says. But God, it's when we repent and we turn to God. So I just want to clarify that. We can't get to heaven by our goodness. We have to get to heaven through Jesus. He's the only door that's available for us, and that is out there. That is the true door and the true path. So not by works, not by our goodness. You know, it's... It is by God's grace that we are saved. And it's through repentance that we turn to God's grace. And repentance is turning toward God and running to Him with everything we got. Amen? So, just to clarify, I don't want you to be confused that you can be good and be accepted in the kingdom of heaven. No, you've got to accept Jesus Christ. And you have to repent of your sins. Amen. That is how we get to heaven. It's through Jesus. Not by goodness, not by good works. All right. Today, I want to share with you and if you don't know this, but Just yesterday, Israel was attacked by Hamas at its northern borders in two places, which spread out the Israeli troops, which made it possible for Hamas to run into the borders of Israel, pretty much take over about 20 towns, take over 200 hostages, and as of the count this morning, there were 198 dead. Because of it. And at the same time, simultaneously, they also launched over a thousand missiles into Israel, killing those 198 and injuring who knows what. And Benjamin Netanyahu declared that Israel is at war. And why is this important to us? Because Israel is the apple of God's eye. Israel is the center of everything that goes around in the world. They are the center. And our jobs are to be praying for the peace of Israel. Amen? As saints. I'm not sure what had happened today. Except I saw in a little news headline that the headline read that Israel armies are on the move. What is interesting to me about this whole thing, about what's going on over in Israel, as this just so happens to be, this attack on Israel just so happened to be right after the Israeli festivals of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Now, two weeks ago, I watched on television um, a little thing, a little half-hour video of Jonathan Kahn, who was preaching on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. And why is that interesting? Because Yom Kippur means... To take away the veil. Right? 
And isn't that what Jesus did when he died on the cross? The veil was torn into, the veil was taken away. But Yom Kippur means to take away the veil, which Yom means apo, Kippur, calypse, calypse, calypso, calypse, apocalypse, which means apocalypse. The beginning of the apocalypse. Yom Kippur is the beginning of the apocalypse or the taking away. I find all these things very interesting that it so happened, almost like Jonathan Kahn said it would. And if you, if you can get that video and watch it, you should watch it. It's about the uh, Jewish festivals, which are so important in the Jewish calendar, because everything is based on those things. It's based on... Everything is based on, God's eye is on Israel. His hands are on his chosen people. When God comes back, he's coming back to Israel. Everything is pivotal about what's going on in Israel in our lives. Just after the uh, Israeli festival of Yom Kippur, which is the beginning of the Apocalypse, or Calypso, whatever, how you ever pronounced it, or the apocalypse, I don't believe has any coincidence. All it reaffirms in me is that we need to be praying for Israel and that we need to be preparing ourselves and our families for what's coming. We need to be prepared for what's coming. We need to be prepared for these coming days because... I believe we are in the end times. And not just me, you guys can see it for yourselves of what's going on in the world. Of everything that's going on. All the flooding, all the birth pains, all of the stress that's going on in the world. Everything from sickness, plagues, to economies, to getting rid of the dollar, to changing over to did All of this is prophesied in the Bible. All of this is happening at the same time. That's why I believe we're in the Bible. It's not like, oh, we had a plague. Now we're talking about more plague. But we had a plague. We've had all these other things happening to the earth. We've had tsunamis. We have wars and rumors of wars all going on at the same time. This is why not just I, but many Bible scholars across the world and many believers believe we're in the end times. Because it's all happening at the same time. Everything is lining up just as the Bible has told us. You know, it wasn't that long ago, a few weeks ago, that Benjamin Netanyahu stood at a podium at the UN and gave a great speech about how there could be, through the Abraham Accords, all these peace with all these nations of Israel. And if you haven't listened to that speech, now we haven't listened to the whole thing, but we watched a glimpse of it. And it wasn't even like a week later that all of a sudden that Israel was attacked. All because of the Palestinians want a two-state. And even though Benjamin Netanyahu was leaning toward a possible two-state solution, which that's what they said they want to do, Palestinians want a state of their own, a nation of their own. They want to be recognized. And they were talking about this. And there were talks, and it talks about this in the Bible. You know, read your word. But then they all of a sudden got attacked yesterday morning. Unexpectedly. They said, how did Israel get caught off guard? Israel is probably one of the top world armies, in the top armies in the world. One of the most powerful nations in the world, even though it's one of the smallest nations there is. If you look at Israel on a map, 
you can see that it's a tiny little sliver of land off the Mediterranean Sea. And all the nations are fighting over that land. Isn't that incredible? Because you know why? Because that's where God's promises is. That's where they are. The Arab nations want a two-state solution with Palestine. I'm telling you, if you didn't see the speech, you should look it up. The 2023 speech of Benjamin Netanyahu at the UN. And listen to his words. He talks about the Bible. I'm telling you all of this stuff because, for one, we need to be aware of the times that we're living in. You need to be aware of the times that you're living in. And you need to be prepared. And we, as a body, we, as the church, we, as the people of God, a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, which I'm going to share later on, need to rise up and be the man and woman God has called us to be. I heard a speaker or a preacher this week say something similar to this. I couldn't remember all of it. But he said, God saved the best for last. God saved the best for last. And he was talking about the people of God. He was talking about you and me. The best for last. Even though darkness is growing in the world exponentially, rising up, darkness is at its crescendo, going crazy, which the Bible told us would happen. And it even says in the end days they will call good, bad, and bad good. And that is what's happening right now throughout the world. And it's been happening for the last 20, 30, 50 years. They've been pushing their evil agendas and saying that it's good. But God saved the best for last. And just as darkness is rising, so isn't the church of God, the pure and spotless, the people that are making themselves prepared and are readying themselves for the war that's raging. Believe it or not, my pastor Tom McDonald wrote a book called The Separation. And he saw a clear line through the middle of the earth. Half of it was darkness, the other half was light. And there was coming a point in time when people can go from darkness to light. And light to darkness. And that great separation... But the separation grew to a point where people could no longer jump over to the light or jump over to darkness. I believe that's happening right now. Our job is to bring the light, which is the life and the light and the blessings of Christ Jesus to the world. God saved the best for last. Though darkness might be rising the church in Christ is growing stronger and stronger and stronger. Our faith, which is being tested by fire, is being redefined and purified, whether we know it or not, because we know that we know that we know in our hearts that we will not stand for evil. I know that none of you out there are going to stand for evil. Because of the spirit that's inside of you, that was formed in you before you were even formed in your mother's womb that's living and breathing in you is going to rise up when the time comes and the pressure's on you will stand for righteousness I believe it you will stand for righteousness like your grandmother said and with integrity standing for what is right not doing what is wrong 
Because you know in your heart, because God placed it in your heart, the difference between right and wrong. Amen? Amen? You are the kingdom of God. You are the warrior who will not be shaken. You will be able to stand against the schemes of the devil, against the rulers and the princes and the powers of darkness in high places. It is you. It is me. It is the believers that are out there that are faithful and true to God's word that are standing, and they're standing with you, even though you might not see them, even though we might be small, but they are standing for righteousness, and they are fighting the good fight like Paul charged Timothy to do. I charge you to do. Fight the good fight. You are the army of the Most High God. You are the ones who will push back the powers and principalities that are coming against you and yours. The anointing that God deposited in you when you were being formed in your mother's womb started to grow when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. I heard a song, I don't know what it was, I don't know what, but it, I think I said it to Julie, my heart beats like a hammer. My heart beats like a hammer. Boom, 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 boom. My heart beats like a hammer. When you first accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your heart, your Holy Spirit heart started beating like a hammer, and it's getting louder and louder as the days are approaching as the days of the God's kingdom coming to this earth are pounding for him and can't wait. I'm in expectation of God coming to this earth. Amen? Pounding. Pounding. Waiting for God to come. Because I know what God has put in you is greater than that of what's in the world. And when the time comes for that anointing to rise up in you, I believe will rise up into you stronger than you even believe could do. And that's when the greater works will happen. That anointing that is formed in you, when you hear the word of God preached, and when you read the word, will rise up in you, and it's just feeding that heart of that army marching toward the end goal of God's kingdom to empower you the believer, to stand your ground on solid ground, to subdue the powers of darkness, fighting against you and yours. God-given destiny. And your right. Because that's what the devil is trying to do, and that's what he's done. He's trying to steal your God-given destiny and your right to the kingdom. He's the one that's fighting against you. The advancement of the kingdom of heaven. He's fighting against that advancement of the kingdom of heaven. Because he doesn't want it to come because he knows his days are short. Amen? God knows that the devil's days are short and the devil knows it too. And he's coming against the devil. And he's going to cast him out in a pit of hell. God saved you. The best for last. That's why we need the anointing. We need the anointing. We need the power of God in us. So we can rise up to the calling of the warrior that's inside us. You're a warrior for the kingdom of heaven. It's time, I wrote down here, it's time for the strong man to be unbound, amen. It's time to break the devil's strategy that he's used over the millennials. And I'm not just talking about the millennials, <laughs> you know, or, or what do they call that, Generation X. I'm talking about thousands and thousands of years. The enemy has had a strategy, and he knows it's true. And the Bible tells us, and even Jesus told us in Mark chapter 3, that all you got to do is bind up the strong man. And then you can enter that man's house, and you can ransack his house, and take off all his possessions. 
That's a strategy. That's a military strategy for the nations that fight against nations. You cut the head of the serpent off, and the serpent has no way to control its body. That's what they would tell you in the military. You stop the chain of command, you hit the chain of command, and then all of the soldiers around them will not know what to do. They will run in disarray. That is how we defeated Desert Storm in a matter of 24 hours. Did you know that? When we fought Desert Storm, when our military went over there and took out Iraq and took out, I don't know, I can't remember his name now. Os- not Osama bin Laden, it was before him. It was um, when George Bush went in there. And, well, no, it was about the same time. But they had the Desert Storm back in the 90s. And they took out the leader of Iraq. What they did is that they took out the command and control centers. So that way the men on the field didn't know what was coming or who was coming. And when they saw the American troops coming with all their forces and with all their tanks, all those men that dug holes in the ground just surrendered because they had no information. They had no one giving them commands and telling them what they should do or how to do it or how to counterattack or counterreact. They just gave up and surrendered. That's exactly the same way the devil has worked in our lives and in our families for millennials. He has destroyed the men who are the anchor of the house. Right? The men are supposed to be the anchors in the house. They're the ones supposed to be leading the house in their in the spiritual walk, in their families, in their wives. He's bound the men up for millennials, and he's destroyed them and destroyed their families throughout the generations by placing a demon in that family after he's bound them up to be passed down from generation to generation, ensuring that that bloodline will never rise up to be who God has called it to be. But there is a time coming when the devils are going to shake, when the children of God, the warriors in Christ in this last day and age, will rise up and realize who they are in Christ Jesus, that the devils will have to flee and they'll be cast out of those homes. And all those curses will be broken, the curses of disease, sickness, illness, will be broken over the families in Jesus' name, over the promises that God had for their families, will, will come to pass in these last days. When we rise up and say, enough's enough, devil, get out of my house, get out of my family, get off of my children, leave my property alone and my things alone, all the things you've stolen throughout the generations, I want them back. I want them repaid. I want you gone, and I don't want you to step foot on this property because all trespassers will be sent to hell in Jesus' name. Amen? That's the stand we got to take. That's who you are and the authority that Jesus Christ gave you over 2,000 years ago, but the devil has still kept you veiled and blinded So you don't realize who you are and what you are. And when you do, he will flee. It won't be like the sons of Stephen. I don't know you, and I don't know you, So, but I know Peter and Paul. They'll be like, I heard of, I heard of Caleb, I heard of Stella, I heard of Grace and Julie and Ephraim and Joe and Julie. and I heard of you. I got to go. It's not my time yet. Just like they said to Jesus, Jesus, it's not my time. Cast me into the pigs. Don't send me back to the pit of hell. No, you know what? It's time. It's their time to be cast out and sent into the pit of hell where they belong. And if any of them tries to come back sevenfold, you just stand your ground against the devil because you're greater than sevenfold. A thousand may fall at your left and ten thousand at your right. Because of who is in you, because of the power that's in you, because of the anointing that's on your life for these days. For the warrior that's in you that's hidden. 
And it's my job to bring that warrior out. You are a warrior in Christ Jesus, a powerful, a powerful, an anointing that's on you that's greater than even the greater works that Jesus did when he walked the earth. How awesome is that? If Jesus went to the gates of hell, took the keys from Satan himself, ascended victorious, and you could do greater things than that, woo! Woo-hoo! <laughs> run, devil, run, devil, run, devil, run! They'll all be running in fear of you because every place you step your foot will be taken for the kingdom of God. No ground will be taken, but ground will be gained by the power of the Holy Ghost that's inside of you that's all around you, in Jesus' name. It's time to break the devil's strategy that he's had for a thousand years. He's plundered our homes. He's stolen our goods. He's left a curse on our family lines. He's called sickness. He's called premature death. He's caused addictions. And he's left his demons to send back information about what's going on in those families to keep us under control. It's time to destroy that communication, cast out that devil, and take control back of our lives and our families and the destiny that God has for each one of us, for each one of you. Today's the day we say no more. No more devil, no more devil. Let's say it. No more devil. Come on, say it like you mean it. No more devil. Louder. No more devil. Let them hear you. Come on. No more devil. Say it like you mean it. Come on. Get it from your gut. Scream it. If you're in a war, you're not going to be like, no more devil. No more devil. Oh, no more devil. No, no, no. I can't have any more devil. You're going to look at him and go, no more devil. I've had enough. Say it like you mean it. Like somebody's threatening your life and your kids. Come on, you ready? One, two, three. No more devil. There you go. That's how you got to say it. You got to take authority over that. You got to say it with authority and power. Don't be afraid. Because that's what the devil wants you to be is afraid. His big tactic is fear. I'm afraid if I speak too loud, they might hear me. Yeah, speak. It's time. It's time we speak. It's time we shout for what's wrong and make things right. Our nation's being led by devils. Devils are in control of our nation. You can see it by the laws and the things they're doing and passing, by the people that are in charge. They're controlled by devils. They're controlled by powers and principalities and darkness, and, and they need to be bound up. We have authority over them. We have power over them. Mark chapter 3, verse 27 says, No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Our houses have been plundered enough. Satan has gained access to our homes through our weaknesses and through our unwillingness to repent and get right with God. For our own ignorance, we've let people lead us astray. It's called wrong, right, and right, wrong. And people believe it. It's time to break the chains that bind the lies the devil's told us and be who God's called us to be. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 says this. It says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You're a conqueror. You're more than conquerors. You're a warrior. Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen people. Do you hear that? 
Just look at the screen. Just look at the screen. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Hallelujah. Praise God. I've been called by the king of kings. He's calling you now. Caleb, come up out of there. It's time to walk in the light. Grace, come up out of there. It's time to walk in the light. Jella, Stella, Julia. That was a, that was a combination of Julia and Stella. Jella. <laughs> I was Jella the two of them. Jella, Stella, <laughs> Julia, Ephraim, Joe, Julie, me. Come up out of there. It's time. It's time. You're a conqueror. You're a warrior. It's time. In Jesus' name. You know, Gideon was called by the Lord. He said, the Lord is with you. You are a valiant warrior, Gideon. In Judges 6.12, Joshua, God told Joshua, be strong and courageous. No, be very strong and courageous. That's who you are. Greater than them. Amen? Joel, you want to play that video? And then we'll close in prayer. I love these guys' videos. Can we get rid of that thing or no? You can't? Oh. Run, devil, run, devil, run, devil, run. Right. There is a war going on. And we're in it. And you're in it, whether you want to be in it or not. You are in a war. And it's been raging for a long time. And it's coming to the end. And the gates of hell are being released upon God's people to pull them away from the light. We are at war. <clears throat> and you need to be ready and prepared and be trained as a warrior. Our weapons are not carnal but mighty by pulling down a stronghold. Our weapons are prayer, our weapons are the word, and our weapons are worship. Amen? Prayer. You need to build your prayer life. It is powerful. We all need to build our prayer life. One of the greatest tactics the enemy's done is taking prayer out of the church. We need to pray, pray, pray. Pray for one another. Pray for the peace of Israel. We need to pray. We need to pray for the brothers and sisters and the saints that are on the front lines battling against evil. Because you don't know when you'll be called up to fight those front lines. We need to pray. We need to be worshiping. Listen to worship music. Praising God. Get rid of all the junk. It's time to clean the trunk of the junk. Amen? And we need to read the Word. The Word of God. Sharper than a two-edged sword. It's our weapon to fight the devil. Amen? So, Julie has another video that she sent to Joe, but we're going to pray and close and then watch the video. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you and praise you for this day. Lord, I believe that no weapon formed against us will prosper, Lord God. If we walk by faith, Lord God, as we walk by faith in, your, in, in this day and in our days to come, that we would trust in you, that we would, Lord God, rise up in our spirits, your, your anointing that's in us that you've deposited, Lord God, that you've breathed in us when you formed us in our mother's womb. Lord God, I pray this, Lord, I pray that you would rise up in your people, Lord God, that we would fight the good fight, 
Lord God, and we would not give up, Lord Jesus, but we would keep fighting the good fight. And I pray this, Lord God, I pray your blessings over this day and over this week. Lord God, I pray that, Lord, you would go before us, make straight our paths, that you would right things that are wrong, that, Lord God, that you would keep your hands upon us, your personal protection, and your eyes over us to watch over us, and that your angels to minister to us. And most of all, we cast out the devil out of our lives, that he has to flee and run from us, from our homes and our families, and off our property. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray this. Amen. Amen. Now, Julie's got a video, right?